Amen. We give God thanks, brothers and sisters, for this another evening. We give God thanks for life, for strength, and for the privilege and the access that we have to join on the Zoom this evening as we study the Word of God. We're trusting that you just don't come, but you really have that hunger and that thirst for the Word of God to prepare yourselves and to be a witness, amen, as we look for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and as we partner with him to harvest the world because it is will that none should loss. And so I trust that you will be blessed as we go into the word of God. Bow your heads with me and let us pray. Our God and our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, we come before you. Gracious God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that comfort us, that keep us, that guide us, that teach us, that open the way for us. We thank you, Father, for your covering. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your protection. We thank you, God, for your presence with us, Lord. We know we are blessed because your presence is with us, Father, and we worship you this evening. We thank you, God, for this another chance as we can bow before your throne and not consume. It is no good that we have done is all because your mercy endured forever. As we present our sacrifice to you, as we present our Bible study before you, I pray, Father, that thou will remove everything that is not of you right now. I pray that you will consecrate this Zoom platform one more time and every individual that comes on this evening, Father, that the Holy Spirit, Father, will open their understanding that they will enable mighty God to receive your word and that they will leave, almighty God, a change individual, a change disciple, a change servant for the most high God. We pray for our teacher and presenter. Mighty God, that you cover him. God, we pray that thou will anoint him and touch him in a very special way. That as you use him this evening, Father, that he will be a blessing as he present himself, Lord God, as a vessel before you to be used by you, Father. Take control, we pray. Direct, we pray. Lead, we pray. Bless, we pray. Let everything, God, that will be said and done this evening will be to your name, to your honor, and to your glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, brethren and friends, with no further ado, I present to you this evening our teacher and presenter, Brother Jeffrey, amen. Receive him in Jesus' name. Praise God. All oh, praises. Praise the Lord. You guys can hear me clear? Yes. All oh, praises. We give thanks. Yeah. Give thanks. All praises. Uh, uh, we wanted another uh, wonderful week. Uh, God bless you guys who are here and those around the way. Give thanks for all of you tuning in um, to the the fourth week, this is the last week, amen, of this uh, <clears throat> uh, deep study through the scriptures of the um, unbreakable promises of of God made to the children of Israel. Um, this has been a, a privilege for me. It's been an honor. So I have to give thanks uh, to the Most High God, my Heavenly Father, and to his only begotten Son, Yahushua HaMashiach, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Um I'm very grateful, and I really appreciate this opportunity to go through uh, the scriptures with you. Praise God. And uh, I would uh, like to do a quick review uh, just to get us on track of where we're going in this uh, last week. Praise God. So uh, the week one uh, was about the promises that were made to the children of Israel. Um the importance of of God choosing them through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that God made an everlasting covenant, an everlasting promise uh, to the children of Israel. It started with Abraham, went to Isaac, uh, Isaac, and then Jacob. Amen. It's important to remember these things. 
um, you know, that the promises weren't, weren't bypassed. They weren't overlooked. Um, they cannot be ignored. God is not a man that he should lie. And every word that he says, it shall come to pass. His word will not return unto him void. And the things that he has said concerning the children of Israel, about them being a special treasure, a special possession to, the, to, to him, that he will never forget them, even in the past and in the future. Amen. He will never abandon them. And that his promises are undeniable. And let us not forget the new covenant. The new covenant is for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. The book of Hebrews confirms this from the book of um, uh, Jeremiah chapter 31. that talks about these promises. If you look up in the in the sky in Jamaica right now, you see the it's probably not sun. It's probably not sunset yet, but, you know, the sun is still up. Right. And tonight you're going to see the moon and the stars. You know, God said if those ordinance would cease, then the nation of Israel would cease to the Israelites would cease to be a nation. So those ordinances are still there. So that means the nation of Israel is still here and God's promises are still true for them. Praise God. And in week two, we talked about the split of the the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Okay. It was, it was very important to go through this because we needed to understand well, why is, why is, why are they divided? Okay. Why did they divide? Because of, of their circumstances of sin uh, started with Solomon. And then God made the prophecy that they would split. Okay. And through this split, this division, you have the Northern kingdom and the Southern kingdom. And they each had to go through their duration of, of exile. All right. And uh, we have understood that only the southern kingdom had returned. Remember that when Christ was here, he was only dealing with the southern kingdom, which was the house of Judah. So the northern kingdom was not yet there during that time of Christ. So when the Israelites, sorry, when the Jews were in Babylon, they returned. And we... We, we read and understood that in the book of Isaiah, specifically chapter 11, talks about how these two nations, the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom, the house of Israel and the house of Judah would no longer be two nations, but that they would be one nation. Amen. And Christ would be their head. Praise God. We talked about the different, the different prophets. It's important to know that, you know, when you're reading to get deeper understanding, like the prophets of Amos and Hosea. And uh, Isaiah and Micah, for example, um, to know where, where, which part are they preaching to, even though they still prophesy of both kingdoms, yet they're still locale, their location is still in, you know, a certain area, southern kingdom and northern kingdom. Praise God. And we, we went through them returning from Babylon to uh, the land of Israel, but yet they still had to go through other captivities. All right. It's important to remember that, that they still had to go through captivity and exile by the Greeks. And even during the time of Christ, they were still under uh, the jurisdiction of the Romans. They were still subjugated unto them. So with that, we went through last week, which was the scattering and gathering. Amen. Also very important. This is future the the scattering you know who is who has been scattered something I, i'd like someone to when they have a chance i want to do a little bit more interaction in this week if possible you know who who has been scattered you know you could take your time and think about this who has been scattered across the four corners who is has been scattered across the islands and, and across the nations as the bible has said that he would scatter his people from one end of the earth even unto the other and that when Christ returns, he's going to gather his people from the four winds, from all the islands, from all the nations, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, which where is in Africa, right? That land, all the nations have the children of Israel. That's where they are in all nations. And in the end, when Christ returns, he's going to return his people to the land, as we read in the book of Jeremiah about Christ taking his people 
it says that Israel and Judah will be saved and dwell safely in the land. Amen. And we read about the nations who have came and taken the children of Israel. That They have taken the children of Israel and put them through subjugation, through slavery. And that the people who are in the land until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled, according to Luke 21, 24, the words of Christ said that you will be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles. And we talked about the people who have been through the land of Jerusalem in Israel after 70 AD. All right. So just want to refresh our memory as we continue on, you know, the, 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 the nations that were there after 70 AD was obviously the Romans. You have the Roman Catholic period. You have a Muslim period. You have the Crusaders return. And then you have the Ot Ot Ottoman people in there. And then you have the British mandate. Okay. And it's important to remember that um, because it's supposed to be Christ who's supposed to return the children of Israel into their homeland, not the government. All right. It's important to remember that it's supposed to be God to do this thing to bring them from the four corners of the earth. And remember, we read that the nations would recognize them. They would know who they are. It would be very evident. Amen. So this is very important to touch on these things, just to refresh our memories. But I'd like to ask the class who's here right now, um, those online right now, it, who, who, would you, who would you say has been scattered across the four corners of the earth? in your mind, and anybody can answer, it's not rhetorical, um, who, who has been scattered? Who would you say has been scattered across the four corners of the earth in all nations? Anyone could, could raise a hand or just say what you think? Amen. Who has been scattered? They say it. Israelite. The Israelites, okay. The Israelites have been scattered according to scripture. So let me rephrase the, okay, I, I see a hand. Go ahead. You can unmute your mic and you can answer, sister. Uh, Those who travel in slave ships. All right. That's a very good answer. All right. So those who are put in ships, correct? Those who have been put into slavery, all right? That is that is a, a good identifier. That is a good way to see who is in all nations, all right? Who has been put into slavery through all in all nations? Who has been taken captive, as Christ said? You'll be led captive into all nations. Now, this study, as I said in times of, the, the weeks ago that uh, it's a very intense study. <laughs> it's uh, we're going through a lot of scriptures um, today. Um, as I said earlier, I want to make it a little bit more interactive. There are some scriptures we're going to go through, but I also want to mention that there is some history. That's very important um, that there are many historians and scholars who have done a lot of research and put in countless times of, of dedication of studies to show who the true Israelites are. And, you know, uh, some of the stuff that we're going to go through today, I just want to mention uh, some of the research, um, resources. Um, the one is, um, it's a book called The History of the Jews by Solomon Grazel. Uh, another book that we're going to touch a little bit is The Hebrewism of West Africa. Uh, this book is written by Joseph Williams. It's a very excellent book. Uh, in fact, I, I have PDF versions. If anyone is interested, um, I can share those PDFs. And there's an excellent website I can share with you guys that you can read these online uh, or on your phone. And um, the Encyclopedia of the Atlas of Slavery, we're going to touch that. And we're also going to touch the Encyclopedia, in, excuse me, the Encyclopedia of the Jewish Diaspora. All right. And um this is, these are wonderful books that we're going to touch a little bit. We're also going to touch on the history of the Moranos. Okay, so stay tuned, stay attentive. 
And please, uh, during this week, uh, sort of this last week, I'd like if anyone has questions, feel free to interrupt. Um, I'd like to take the time to answer questions, anything that is not clear or anything that you may not understand. I really would like this last week to uh, go through things that you may have missed or may not understand fully. I really like to go through those details and 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 open up and broaden our understandings. Amen. So that we can grow in this uh, in this study. Praise God. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to this. So we'll begin now. And I'm going to ask um, right now we're going to continue off from last week. So um, we we talked about Ezekiel 36 and just paraphrasing it right now. Uh, we talked we talked about how um, the land that the enemies, the other nations will be possess in possession of the land of Israel. This is Ezekiel 36, just paraphrasing for now, and that the 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 the, the nations had made the Israelites their property. OK, they made them slaves to many nations. This is Ezekiel 36 from verses one through three. All right. That they be deserted throughout nations and that the land would be occupied by other nations, okay? And this correlates very well with what Christ said in Luke 21, verse 24, okay? And then when you continue reading down in verse 8 through 12, it talks about how the people will return to the land, okay? And that in this return, Christ would be there and they would no longer be taken captive, okay? They would no longer be uh, put in slavery, but they would be in this land of Israel. And it correlates very well with Jeremiah 23 that we read, that they'd be there in peace with security and safety, praise God, and that no one would harm them, and that the other nations would all know that these are the children of Israel. There would be no war against them. Amen. So let's continue with this, um, talking about this captivity a little bit more. And then we'll get into more about who the Israelites are and where are they. Um, praise God. So if I can have a reader for the book of Joel, we're going to read Joel chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Praise God. Greetings, everyone. Praise God. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. All right. I just want to cut in real quick, if you don't mind, Sister Sandra, as you're reading so wonderfully, I really appreciate it. See, at this time is talking about behold, the days come. Amen. This is referring to the future, talking about the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. He's saying here in verse 2 that I will gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. This is Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat is the valley. This means the place to judge. That's what the name Jehoshaphat means. All right. And for what reason? For harming who? The, the heritage his people, the Israelites, his special possession, amen, and for scattering them among the nations, all right? So they also parted my land. They divided up the land. This is very, very, very important, and this is future. Some of this has already taken place. The scattering has taken place. We understand that, but the valley that where all nations are brought, that has not happened, so this is this is concerning the future. Praise God. I just want to bring that out. You continue on, Sister Sandra, please. Thank you. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot mm -hmm. and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Mm. So what are they saying? They cast lots. That's that's a way of throwing dice, right? So they're 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 they're, they're throwing dice. Um they're they're gambling pretty much for for what? For the people, right? To put them in slavery. They traded boys and, and, and for wine, the Bible, excuse me, uh, for a harlot, for prostitution, and, and, and sold girls 
to get drinks. This this is this is talking about the slave trade. This is talking about uh, slavery, buying and selling of slaves. So you notice here, as we just read, thank you, Sister Sandra, dividing up the land. Okay, not just one. <laughs> it's the nations that divided up the land. The United Nations divided up the land. All right, so part of the land even today. You see that there are the the Europeans who are there right now, and then you also have Arabs who are there too. All right, you have the, the Palestinians, right? So the, the parts given to them as well. So it's not just it's not a whole like so called Jews that are there. It's it's there there are different nation. There's two different people that are there right now fighting over the land. All right, uh, the 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 nations decided that the Israelites would be their slaves, as we read just in verse two and verse three. All right. So here is something that is future and also has already happened. So I don't know if you guys remember how we broke down some scriptures in the book of Jeremiah 16, how he talks a little bit about things that are going to come to pass in a, in a current time. And then there's a latter day. This is similar to the same thing. There's some of these things have already taken place. And then there's the latter, which obviously when God comes and does his judgment and gathers back his people. Let's read verse seven, please. I have a reader for verse seven. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them mm -hmm. and will return your recompense upon your own head. So here's the 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 amazing part about God is He's always going to take revenge. You know, you don't have to take revenge. God is going to do it. It says, "Behold, I will raise them up, raise them out of the place where He have sold them." So, in other words, I'm I'm going to bring them back from all the places which you sold them. So, I have a question, and this is not rhetorical. Anybody can answer. All right. So the Lord will bring the Israelites back from all the places where they were sold. So I'm asking a question. Which people on the face of the earth currently live in the places which they were sold as slaves? I'll pose it again. Let it, let it sit and digest. <laughs> so... The, the, the Lord is going to bring back the Israelites from the place where they were sold. That's what we read in verse 7. So the question is, which people on the face of the earth currently live in the place which where they were sold as slaves? Now, I understand that today you might think, well, I'm not a slave. I live in Jamaica or in uh, the Cayman Islands or in Haiti or in Canada, or in the United States, but your ancestors, you know, your forefathers, were put in slavery. So I ask the question again. So which people on the face of the earth currently live in the places which they were sold as slaves? Good evening. Yes, go ahead. Toronto. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sis. I, um, I have, I think that in in Russia there are some Jews in the rush in Russia. Um, some time ago, um, there were a big uh thing about taking the Jews out of out of Russia, and a lot of them had came out of Russia and came back to Jerusalem. But a lot of them are still in Russia today, yeah. and they are they are still there because they are not talked about or taken care of. So they are still slave in Russia, and um, other part of the world. The whole the whole world is um is is where the the Jews are. They are scattered over the whole entire universe. So so we know that um in the time that. Jesus Christ, when he comes back, he's gathered, as he said, he would gather his people from the four wings of the earth. Mm -hmm. So they are everywhere. The Jews are everywhere. But as um, even now that they are fighting um, in Gaza, God said he will fill Gaza with his people until there's no space left 
for them. So, so now you know that the Jews are coming back, but slowly, and because they are they are everywhere in the world, everywhere. And um, I believe you asked a question: mm -hmm. How many tribe um, is um, how much no. tribe are there? I, I'm not sure. Well, no, no, so I'm going to repeat the question, sis. I appreciate your comments. All right, I asked, which people on the face of the earth currently live in the places which they were sold as slaves? Haiti? The Jews. The Jews, okay. okay. Someone said Haiti? Yes. Wonderful. So, would you agree if we just read... Joel chapter 3, verse 7, that, behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them, all right? So the places which they were sold, they will be brought back out of the places that they were sold. So would you agree that Haitians were sold in slavery? Yes, everybody? Yes. Okay. How about Jamaicans? Yes. All right. Yes. How about African Americans? Yes. All right. How about and, people in 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 Brazil? Yes. Oh, I like it. I don't know. That I don't know. Okay. Yeah, we'll be so, we, so we have the answer, all right, that the people all right that are in the lands right now, Jamaica, Haiti, Brazil, United States, other places around the world. Okay, we can go on and on. They are still in the place that they were sold. Now, you might be thinking, well, I wasn't sold. And I already said that. Not you personally were sold, but your forefathers were sold. Okay, so. Oh, right yeah, at your, go, right yeah your, go ahead, sis. Go ahead, go ahead. I I totally lost here because okay that's fine. I thought I thought I wasn't on for for a few weeks, but that's fine. What you're saying that I kind of I kind of lost because mm -hmm. I thought that you were not with like like um people who are Indians that are, are sold black people that are sold. I I thought you were talking deliberately um the Jews and that's why I spoke about the Jews are still in Russia. And 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 other parts of the world, every part of the world. So I I was to totally um I didn't understand what you were saying about other people. That I thought you were speaking definitely directly on the Jews that they are scattered and they will come back to their their homeland in in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry okay. about it. I didn't no. know you were talking about other people. Yeah. So. Uh, we kind of addressed a little bit of that last week. There was a gentleman who came on and made a comment uh, similar to what you're saying right now. And, um, you know, it's important that we get the understanding of who's been put into slavery, who's been scattered across the four corners of the earth. And when we talk about the word scattered, it, it has to do more with taken in captivity, captured and put into slavery. Uh, put into subject, subjugation um, because when we look at the current state of, of the land right now, the people that are in that land uh, currently today, according to Luke 21, 24, sis, they are Gentiles. All right. So the land today is occupied by Gentiles, is trampled down by Gentiles. The, the Jews, the Israelites are still scattered, are still in a place of captivity. They're still in a place where they were sold as slaves. They're still in the lands that they were held captive. And no one has rescued them. And that's what we went through last week. And um, it's okay. I, I don't mind going through a little bit with you at this moment, but we're going to carry on. And if you have any other questions that pop up, sis, go ahead and ask. And I'll try to answer the best of my abilities. But praise God. I thank you for being on this week. Um, so, so it's important to keep in mind of the who has been, and we just talked about Haitians, Jamaicans, and so on and so forth. Okay. And and like the sis just brought up. Oh, oh, uh, go ahead, Sister Marcy. You go ahead. 
I see your hands raised up, Sister Good. I just have a question because um, it's kind of in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking that um, when we think of those persons who were sold as slaves, they came from mostly Africa, right? We know mm -hmm. that people from India and the China and so were sold as well. But when, when we are reading in the Bible and we are thinking of the Jews, I'm thinking of Palestine. So I'm wondering if you can explain where, where these people um, driven mm -hmm. out before and moved to these lands and then sold from there. You know, you see what the question I'm having? Yeah. Yes, so, because we know Palestine as that piece of land there. It's close to Africa. Yes, I know. Yes. So if you if you can align that in my mind. Yes. So during the time of the Ottoman people, during 1516 and 1917, all right, you have the time that they were occupying that land. The the Arabs were still occupying that land. And then the British came in World War I, and they captured Jerusalem in World War I. But just because it was captured, it doesn't mean that those Arabs were put into slavery. Okay? Um, and, you know, the current Jewish people weren't put into slavery into all nations. Um, the same thing about the Palestinians. They, they weren't put into slavery uh, amongst all nations. Um I, I've never heard of them being put into slavery through all nations. So those groups, those two groups that we're talking about, um, they are claiming ownership of the land, but they've never been scattered throughout all the nations as slaves. Not according to Joel uh, chapter three that we're reading here. And I also want to point out one more thing that's very important. Um, when they come back to the land uh, in Deuteronomy, remember we read last week, Deuteronomy chapter 30, um, they would have a heart for God um, and they would, they would be following the commandments. And one of those commandments is to believe in Christ. And, <laughs> you know, they, they, the practices in that country, uh, they're, they're, I wouldn't say they align with the commandments in that land. Um yeah, and I'll leave it at that for now. Um, but that that land is is filled with Gentiles. It's filled with other nations. It's uh, according to prophecy, the the Israelites are not in that land. It is Gentiles. I hope that was able to clear something up for you, sis. Does that make sense for you, Sister Gooden? Um, I can't. Um, still a little. Um, not too clear, but I'll wait. I'll have patience and wait. So, what? Well, basically, sis, what the the to try to make it clear is that they, they weren't put in slavery into all nations. That's that's the clear. That's that's really what it is. They they're the Gentiles that are trampling the land. The land no, what, is. Go ahead. What, I'm, what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. the people um that have from a history point of view that I've read about who were, who were brought into all these different places um, slavery, they came out of West Africa mostly, right? Yes, correct. Yes, So, and, and I'm thinking that when the prophecies prophecies were written it was written about people, God um, scattering his people out of Palestine that's what I'm I'm thinking. So I'm saying unless he had God had um, earlier scattered, taken them, driven them out of Palestine and they were in Africa mm -hmm. and they came from Africa. I'm I'm trying to to yeah. link because I know so, the people the people who were scattered abroad, but I have never read that they, okay. they were um taken out of Palestine itself directly, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay. So yeah. what, what we're going to do for for you is eventually we're going to go through these two hands real quickly, if possible, and we're going to go into the history a little bit more. And I think the history is going to clear a little bit of that up, how they got into West Africa. That's what we're going to touch today, sis. So I'm glad you brought that out. 
So if um, I'm going to ask uh, politely if we can get like no longer than a minute on each, uh, unless they're questions, but if they're comments, if we could just get a quick comments, I'd really appreciate that. Um, let's go with Brother Lenworth first, and then uh, Pastor Lang. You go ahead. Good night, everyone. Blessings. Night. All praises to the Most High. Thanks. Uh, the question that the sister asked a while ago is what I was um, about to comment on, but you said that you'll deal with any history, so I just leave it for that. Okay. All right. Okay, so thank you for your comments. Um, Pastor Lane, go ahead. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, I think the challenge, and I, I think the history will help in somewhat, but the, the fact is that we have grown up believing the history that we have been taught. And I said, that is one of the challenges we have. If the same person, who captures you, writes your history, you really don't know your history. Mm -hmm. So I said, that is a challenge that Sister Gooden and others would have. Now, we have an interesting scenario, even in Revelation, where God, Jesus commended the Ephesians that they have tried those who said they were Jews and they were not, right? That was spiritual, from a spiritual perspective, I believe. But the fact is that we have the same scenario that we grew up hearing a history about the Jews. <laughs> Who wrote that history? Who gave us that history? <laughs> and so I think that is the challenge. So I hope I hope the history that you're going to relate will actually help to challenge the history that we have been taught. But I said, this is something that we need to understand. Mm -hmm. The people who captured us are the ones who wrote our history for us. All those people who got oh, yeah. the history and history and so on, they got it in institutions that their captors created. So <laughs> that is part of the challenge we have. So, so I understand why people are the way they are. We grew up, we heard about the Jews, we believe that they're the Jews. Who told us that they were the Jews? <laughs> All right, let's go. So let's go. Thank you, Pastor Lang. I appreciate you. Uh, Lorraine, Gail, is it a question that you have or a comment? Praise God. Okay, Sister. Um, get, is yes, it, and it's just, it just, it's just, um, I just want to know who were captured in Africa. Uh, you spoke about mm -hmm. um, capturing in Africa. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking about? You're talking about the Jews, or mm -hmm. you're talking about black people, or who are you, who are you referring to? So I'm referring to. Yeah, I'm sorry, sis. So I'm referring to the black people, and as we're going to go in this lesson, we're going to learn a little bit more about those black people in that part of the land. We're gonna learn a little bit more about them. Okay. Um, Pastor Lang, is that an old is that an old hand? I think it is. I think it is. All right, all praises. So um, let's go right into it. Let's go right into the history. So we talked about the scattered, correct? And now we're gonna go a little bit more into the history. Okay. All praises. So it's, it's very crucial that we know what happened to the Jews from after the time Christ resurrected, okay, until our modern day. So around a, a few decades after the days of Acts, uh, we have the war of the Romans against the Jews, okay? Titus led a siege. The temple was destroyed. And Jerusalem was overtaken. All right. The emperor Vespasian issued an order to ensure that no member of the royal house should be left among the Jews. All the descendants of David's line should be hunted and executed. And that this result it resulted in further widespread persecution of the Jews. 
Now, we have to remember in the book of Acts, remember on the day of Pentecost, there were Jews that came across it from, from, the, from the jurisdictions of the Greeks and the Romans. Okay, because remember, after they came out of Babylon, they still had to go through subjugation. So they were still spread out through these territories. All right. So it's important to remember that. So there were Jews that believed. Okay, they came, they were baptized, 4,000 uh, souls were added to the church, the Bible says. The the major majority of them were Jews. Um, and we have to note that the time, okay, that they were coming to worship, they were coming to worship in Jerusalem. And they continued to come to Jerusalem to worship up until 70 AD, Okay. Because at 70 AD, the war was already pronounced against the Jews. So since the Romans, these Gentiles, okay, the other nations, came and invaded. And then centuries later, all right, this major empire, through Constantine, said that Christianity is now their main religion. And through them... They have decided to show us what's important about the faith. And there is a lot of disconnect to the children of Israel, as we heard from Pastor Lang. There's a lot of disconnect, especially concerning where they are and who they are. All right. I want to share this screen uh, with you. Uh, I'd like to have a reader, please. Read the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 20 through 24. Praise the Lord. Luke 21, 20 through 24. Mm -hmm. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. All right. This desolation is talking about 70 AD. This is also prophesied in the book of Daniel as well. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Mm -hmm. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein for these be the days of vengeance, that is, all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Lastly, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive, into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Thank you, Sister Sandra. Can you guys yes. all see? Can you all see my map here? Yes. All right. So in the purple here, this is the this is the jurisdictions. These are the districts that the Romans occupied. Okay, and we read. Luke, Christ is saying, he's saying to the Jews, letting them know that the destruction of the land is getting ready to happen. 70 AD. Christ is mentioning fleeing to the mountains. Okay, what is the nearest place <laughs> to escape the Roman rulership during that time? All right. Christ here is speaking about the land in Africa. All right. A very good example of this is when Mary and Joseph went with Christ. And where did they go to flee from Herod? They went to Egypt, right? They went to a place where, you know, people looked like them. It was easier for them to hide in a place that people look like them. And if you see here, this jurisdiction, you see in the red is where Jerusalem is. In, in the southern kingdom, that's the house of Israel, Judea, all right? The best way for them to hide would be to go to Egypt, 
and be amongst people that look like them or to go into Arabia. All right. And there's a wonderful book that we're going to touch today as well. Um, it's the Hebrewism of West Africa. And on page 227, the writer says that whatever may be thought of the more or less the Sahara, myth mythologically, traditions connected with the earliest Jews in North Africa, it is now practically an established fact that a nation of Jews, Jews at least in faith and perhaps to its origin, long held sway south of the Sahara. And if you look at this map here just below Egypt is the south of Sahara. We're going to look at a few maps today. All right. We're going to look a little bit at Europe and Africa. All right. All praises. So I'm going to stop sharing just a moment. All right. Praise God. So time of the Gentiles. Thank you, Sister Sandra. So the time of the Gentiles. So this time of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled, right? This took place as soon as the Romans took over, as soon as they took over Jerusalem. And it's going to continue until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled, which is the physical return of Jesus Christ. So why? Why? Well, Christ prophesies. He says that they would fall by the edge of the sword. They would be led away captive in all nations. And they are not in power anymore because they are in captivity. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles, which is currently happening to this day. <laughs> all right. So in order for the Jews to escape this persecution, they had to flee into the mountains. They had to flee away from the Roman jurisdiction that I just showed in that map. So they fled south of Arabia and further into Africa. And I'm not saying this because there was no Jews in these Roman jurisdictions. There were, of course. Uh, actually, there are estimated over 50,000 Jews were still across these Greek and Roman territories. All right. May I have a reader for the book of John, chapter 7, verse 35? Praise the Lord. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles mm -hmm. and teach the Gentiles? Amen. All right. Praise God. So Christ is saying, and you read the verse before, you will seek me and not find me. Okay. Um, and you cannot go where I'm going. And they said, well, he's going to go to, he's going to, he's going to go to the Gentiles, to the dispersed. All right. So in the Greek, the word here for Gentiles is Helen. Okay. That word Helen is the word for Hellenized, which is Greeks, the Greeks. So he's saying here, is he going to go to the Jews, which are in the lands <laughs> in the lands and speak to the Jews, the dispersed. All right. Because remember that after Babylon, there was still a, a, a Greek captivity. So they were still dispersed in Greek territories, which is Roman territories. All right. They're the same Greco Roman territories. Okay. And it's important to understand too, that, you know, um, this term is used specifically to the children of Israel dispersed, right. Um, in foreign nations. So uh, Paul, an example is Paul was considered a Roman, okay? The letters that he was writing to were territories which were occupied by believers, but also by Jews who were dispersed in these places like Ephesus and Galatia, okay? These are in Asia Minor. These are Gre Gre um, sorry, Greco-Roman territories, so even Paul's letters, he's writing to um, the believers in these territories. So in these territories, um, as the Romans began to spread and began to take, you know, Christianity as their main religion, many of the Jews in these territories began to be persecuted as well. Okay. And I just want to refresh our memory. So I just want to show a map. 
and just to see uh, the land, the territory. All right, so on the right here, the yellow, this is the Greek empire. This is the Greek territory, the Greek jurisdictions. All right, and then to the left is the Roman jurisdictions, the Roman territories during this time. Um, you know, the Israelites, the Jews specifically, I'll say, okay, the Jews, the southern kingdom, were spread throughout these territories. All right, remember Acts 2, when they came, they came from where? Parthia, Persia, Media. They came from Egypt. They came, All these places, they were Jews there. All right? And they were still spread out through Roman territories. Okay? All praises. So now that we understand a little bit more um, that there were Jews throughout these territories, uh, places like Asia Minor, a lot of the, the writings of Paul were to those territories. Okay, paganism was very common, all right, before Christianity began to take its its toll. Um, now, the Jews, um, now for the Jews in these territories, they were still upholding their law and their customs and their traditions. For example, I bring up Acts 2 again. They still went to Jerusalem up until 70 AD, all right, to practice their culture. And throughout these Roman territories... The spread of Christianity was being pushed. And by the 4th and 5th century, Christianity became the predominant religion. And there was a council, uh, the first, um, pardon me if I'm not pronouncing these words right, um, the first ecumenical council of Nicaea. Okay, And this was led by Constantine. This council was in 325 A.D. This was meant to discuss the faith. However, it was also um, a way to separate the Jews from the Christians. Okay, They forbid Christians to eat unleavened bread on Passover. This council was also discussing how they would celebrate their, you know, su Sabbath was now changed <laughs> to Sunday. All right. Um, they they couldn't celebrate Passover uh, the same time the Jews did. They prohibited Christians from visiting the synagogues or to rest um, or to sorry or to listen to the Jews any Jews teaching. Okay, and as I mentioned, Sunday was now instituted, which a lot of us are familiar with Sabbath keepers on here. Sunday was now instituted as the day of rest for Christians, and. This council, they also said that the Christians weren't allowed to observe the Sabbath day as the Jews observed it. And as these regulations began to take impact against the Jews, many of their privileges were taken away. And because of this put down, uh, the Jews were forced to migrate further west and south. There is a lot of councils that were taken place by the Roman Catholics and another council in 1215, um, that was called the Fourth Lateran Council. That was it was issuing series of decrees against the Jews. A few of them that I will mention: um, Jews were not allowed to employ Christians. All right, uh, the Jews had to wear distinctive garments in order for them to separate the Jews from the Christians. Okay, even though the Jews went through this oppression and persecution by Christians, they also suffered persecution and oppression by the Muslims. Okay, there was a spread of uh, Mohammedids and, and Islam began to spread in the 7th century. And remember I mentioned earlier that there were Jews who also, they migrated into Africa, but they also migrated into Arabia as well, all right, which is a very prominent um, Muslim territory. OK, so they also. Through the rise of the Muslims of Islam, the their conquest in these Muslim territories still had Jews in there. So. This was a very hard thing for Jews all around these territories. So because of this, it was persecution on both ends <laughs> on these two big major religions. The Jews were suffering persecution. But the Jews still continued. Uh, to be a people by keeping their traditions and culture. 
All right. And we talked a little bit about slavery, right? We talked about, you know, the scattering and it's, 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 it's across the nations that we, we, we see that these people who are taken and it, it, it cannot be mentioned without talking about the slave trade, right? The scattering cannot be talked about without talking about the, the slave trade and specifically the transatlantic slave trade. And this is the major identifier of who the Israelites are. Therefore, we got to take a deeper look into history, right? That's what we're doing right now. All right. And when we find out more regarding these people who are taken in the slave trade, we understand that these the, the Jews had to continue to migrate, okay, and spread, get further, further away from persecution. All right. So going back to the Christians in Christianity. All right. So the Christianity... Uh, Christianity began to spread uh, very fluidly throughout the Roman territories, and the Jews were suffering persecutions through those decrees, through those councils. So they had to look into places where they could escape. Africa was one of the main places that they chose to escape. But there's also a place in Spain, okay? Uh, many Jews migrated further west into Spain. And at that time, at one time, Spain had a fair amount of Jews. Uh, from the 8th century up until 1492, the Jews' religion was recognized and tolerated in Spain. However, they still experienced forced conversions. Uh, and examples of these is uh, the king. Some of the kings of Spain decreed that if the Jews refused to get baptized, they would be banished put in through exile, and even lose their properties. And it was also said that if any uh, if any Jew was practicing their, their culture, they were to be seized, all right, and forced into Christianity. And throughout the centuries leading up to 1492, which is a common date for people to know, <laughs> 1492 is a very special date, um, the people of Spain began to rebel against the Jews. All right. Be, be very violent towards them, you know, to force them into getting baptized, forcing them into Christianity. Um, and leading up to 1492, they suffered lots of violence. The Jews did. And for them to escape this persecution, uh, many Jews had to be baptized. All right. And the people of Spain, you know, wanted no separation. All right. They didn't want to see the Jews practicing their culture. All right. And many Jews still kept their ways. You know, they still practiced their culture. But on the outside, they would show themselves as Christians. All right. The Jews were these type of Jews were known as Moranos. All right. What is a Morano? A Morano is a Jew who converted to Christianity to escape persecution, but continue to practice their culture secretively. It was a term of abuse, and it was also applied to any descendants of Jews. This word was labeled on the Jews because they hated them for practicing their culture. All right? So it's important that we understand now that these Moranos that not all Jews were Moranos, but all Moranos were Jews, all right? It wasn't every single Jew who converted to Christianity. It was those specific Jews who wanted to escape death, to escape persecution. Praise God. I see a hand. You can go ahead and unmute and ask a question or make a comment. Thank you, um, Brother Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. The question I have when we say convert to Christianity, mm -hmm. we know their their religion is Judaism, right? Yeah, that's their culture, yeah. But when when Christ spoke to the, the children of Israel, including his disciples, mm -hmm. they say and the scripture itself tells us that they would be scattered abroad and they would take the gospel with them. Mm -hmm. So I am kind of you see where I'm at. Okay. Uh, we today have um say we are descendants of Jewish background. Let mm -hmm. let's say I'm claiming that. Yep. 
what we remember the text Jesus also said uh, the scripture and the gospel said they were scattered abroad so I understand I'm getting I'm getting the picture but what even when you say I'm converted to Christianity you are talking about the um the persecution and those who went over to to accept um like whatever the Romans were teaching yes. Okay, so yes. probably we need to make because it it, it it was the disciples who were for first called Christians in Antioch. So right? this is sorry to cut you off. This is after Acts, dear. This is after Acts. This is when Constantine uh, had his conversion to Christianity and made Christianity the main religion in these Roman territories. So this is a form of Christianity, if you want to say that. Yes. So okay. this is this is not the disciples. This is after 70 AD. This okay. is 325 AD. Okay. okay. All right. All praises. So so through through these forced conversions, um as I was saying the 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 Jews were forced to convert, but some still held their culture, okay? Uh but they do it secretively because they were being persecuted for holding their culture, all right? So through the 15th century, the leaders of the Spanish church had many councils and introduced the Spanish Inquisition. So in 1478, a papal bull was issued empowering the Spanish sovereigns to have complete jurisdictions over the heretics and their accomplices. Thousands of Jews were made to suffer through torture chambers, being burnt alive, and public executions all passed down from the Inquisition punis punishment. Eventually, the Spanish church requested to the king and queen to clear the land of the Jews. The decree to expel the Jews from Spain was signed on March 31, 1492. The Jews were given until August 1st, 1492, to make arrangements for their departure. And it's an interesting note here that even this date, 1492, who do you think about it in 1492? Can I hear someone from, from online? What do you think? What comes to mind when you hear 1492? Columbus. Christopher Columbus. Thank you, sis. <laughs> Christopher Columbus. He <laughs> noted this. He noted this in his voyage of discovery and colonization on August 2nd, 1492. He says, my three ships saw the ships with Jews exiled sail by. When did Columbus leave? Columbus left on August 3rd, 1492. So when the exiles deported Spain... They were scattered across the Mediterranean and headed further south into Africa. And there was a vast majority that fled into Portugal. Now we're going to look at it. We, we already looked at a map, but Portugal and Spain are neighbors, kind of like, um, um, I don't know, what can I use for you guys? Haiti and Dominican Republic. Okay, I'm going to share this screen here. All right, and, oh, I'm sorry. Just bear with me. Bear with me, guys. I apologize for the, okay. All right, you guys able to see my screen here? Yes. Wonderful. If you look up here, okay, so you have Africa here. Okay, and up top here, and where my arrow, can you guys see my arrow? Yeah? So here you have Espang, which is Spain, okay? And right beside Spain is Portugal, all right? So I'm going to leave this map up as I continue with my uh, presentation. So what we have here is the, uh, the Inquisition and the Israelites, the Jews specifically, now going into Portugal and further into northern Africa. If you see Spain and Morocco here, Morocco, it's very close. 
So they had to deport Northern Africa as well as going further into Portugal. So during this time, it, it was said that there was almost 100,000 Jews who migrated into Portugal. And, but that time was short spent. Um, and I wanted to talk about this map a little bit. So the Portuguese, all right, this is interesting to note that the Portuguese had founded an island in San Tome in 1471. You see where that little red arrow, the little red arrow here, it says San Tome. That's the coast of West Africa. You guys see that? All praises. So the Portuguese were the first Europeans to establish themselves on the west coast of Africa. They first came as merchants and then as conquerors and enslavers. They held the Jews as their possession, taken from Portugal and transported to the island of San Tome. So you see that island of San Tome here. Where is it? In west coast of Africa. You see Cameroon, Nigeria, all right, Benin, Ghana, coast, coast Ivory Coast. Okay, this is the region where the Portuguese established themselves. Okay, so the Jews were, were known as the Black Portuguese. All right, so in this book that I'm referring to is the book of the Moranos. The Jews were known as Black Portuguese in San Tome and in Portugal. So before 1492, the Portuguese had already been sending Jews to the island to run their slave trade. And in 1496, an official decree was made by King Manuel of Portugal expelling all the Jews. Portugal concluded the same way the other Christian countries, talking about in Europe, all right, during that time, okay, um, uh, proclaiming that the children of the Jews, ages 4 to 14, had to be brought for baptism. Even if they didn't come willfully, they were forced. And this persecution is a repeating theme. All right? It's a, repeat, it's a repeating theme for the Jews for following their culture. You know, even we see that through the Romans. I'm going to stop sharing here. All praises. We see that through... Even times past by the Greeks, you know, um, the Jews during and, and and like I said, this is these sources are also in the in the book of Maccabees, which is in the Apocrypha. All right. And the Apocrypha is 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 a, the time where we have the 400 years of 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 silence. All right. That's where the Jews were uh, being their, their history was still going on during that 400 years. All right. And so what we have here is forced conversion, but it wasn't to Christianity, but it was becoming Greeks. So being Hellenized was a custom of the Greeks. That's what they did. Whenever they went and conquered a land, they would be Hellenized, forced to their ways. So the Jews were forced to abandon their, their culture, their customs. And the, 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 the Greeks defiled the temple. They, they made dedications to the Olympus god, uh, Zeus. All right, their altars were covered with the the detestable sacrifices, um, and it was impossible for uh, the Jews to keep the Sabbath during that time of Hellenization, or or even to admit of being a Jew. They weren't allowed. They weren't allowed to admit of being a Jew. Um, the the Jews were forced to celebrate um, things that they didn't celebrate, pagan festivals, pagan things, even to eat unclean meats. They were forced to this. And um, they were told to put every Jew to death who refused to adopt the way of a Greek. The same way the Spanish, the same way the, 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 the Roman Catholic and Christianity did the same thing to the Jews in their Roman territories. This is a repeating theme. You know, the Jews went through the same persecution by the Greeks being Hellenized. They had to adopt the way of life of the Greeks. And it, it, these were very hard times for them throughout their life. Um, it, there was said that um, even um, a child was um, hung because the mother circumcised them. Um, there was a man who was celebrating the Sabbath and they were burned to death 
because they wouldn't adapt to the ways of the Greeks. The same way we're learning about this in this Spanish Inquisition, expelling the Jews. And you notice that even when they migrated, they still had to go through persecution. They went to, a lot of them went to Portugal, and even there, they went through persecution. All right. I want to show one more screen as we continue. Um, this, this, this is the territories to the right and the left. These are the, uh, during the time, the 7th century, 7th and 8th century, um, what we have here is Islam in the green. This is the Islam territories during this time. Now, remember the time is 7th, 7th and 8th century. Okay. And what we have, I hope you guys can see it clear. It's kind of hard. I know it's not easy on the eyes. But here you have the, you know, the, the Middle East, which is part of Africa, and you have Northern Africa, okay? Um, and then you have Christendom at the top here in the red. There's your Christian territories, okay? And this is a, a period of time where these two religions, these two major religions were on the spread. They were on the rise. And for the Jews to practice their way, became very difficult in these territories that they were in. So what did they do during this time? They had to migrate further south, further into Africa. All right? All praises. So let's broaden our understanding about the Israelites in Africa. Once again, if there's any questions or comments, just... Post it up, raise your hand. I'm, I'll stop for you guys because, like I said, I really like to interact with you if there's things that you don't understand, okay? So please ask. So let's broaden our understanding about the Israelites in Africa. There's a book, a wonderful book. Uh, it's the Atlas of the Transatlantic Slave Trade, okay? And pay, on page one, it says that both buyers, which were Europeans, and sellers, which were Africans, saw the people traded into captivity on the African coast as outsiders, foreigners, strangers. All right. So this means that when they looked for slaves, when the Europeans came to Africa and looked for slaves, it was not random. It wasn't unpredictable. They knew who they were coming for. The Europeans did not enter into Africa and pick Africans just out of a hat. Why? The Europeans had already established relationship through trade and commerce with the Africans. Like I mentioned earlier, Portugal was the first European nation to establish themselves in the west coast of Africa. Okay? So the Europeans already had a, a relationship with the Africans through trades and commerce. It is very unlikely that they would have taken native Africans as slaves when they were already building a long-term mutual agreement with them through business. All right. So once again, we have to recall that after 70 AD, many Jews had to flee into the mountains, all right? Flee away from the Roman persecution, all right? So they fled where? They fled into where? Africa. They fled into Arabia. In these parts, like I showed you in that map, they still suffered persecution, not only by the Romans, but also by the Muslims, all right? So some of the larger exoduses of the Jews came from Muslim Arabs via the Arab slave trade, all right? There's not just the Atlantic, transatlantic slave trade. There was also an East African slave trade, which is the Arab slave trade, all right? And North and East Africa had many Jews in these regions. And due to the threat of the Muslims, many of them continued migrating into Central and Western Africa. This migration continued with regularity for hundreds of years, all right? Um, so not only do we have the relocation of the Jews from Spain, 
and from Portugal into Africa, where they relocated for the Inquisition. But before this, we also have the Jews who were to flee from the Roman persecution, flee into the mountains. And we have this migration from the Jews fleeing the Muslims as well. For these reasons, especially when talking about the scattering, a great place to look for the Jews, for the Israelites, is in Africa. All praises. All right, we'll take a little break. I see a hand. Okay. Yes, praise the Lord. Oh, God, uh, all praises. Let me see. Yes, so I have a thought-provoking, well, it's provoking me for mm -hmm. um, understanding, um, which you've highlighted um about the, the Jews. Mm -hmm. Um I grew up believing um most of my life uh, until I came into the word of God, but still it wasn't clear then um until now it's provoking my thought. You mention in it as it did um before I, I started, um, became a Christian, is that I thought that Jews were white. Mm -hmm. I um, knew of an entertainer, Sammy Davis Jr. I believe he said um, he was a Jew. So when I heard about the Sammy Davis Jr., I was, as I said, younger before I was really a Christian. And I thought, oh, he just turned himself, you know how people just acc um, acclaim and put themselves to certain um, religion. So now hearing you speak about it, and of course, that's why we're here to get educated. Mm -hmm. um, reading the Bible, we do read, you know, of different um, sects of people, S-E-T-X of mm -hmm. people. Sect, yep. mm -hmm. Sectors of people. You know what I'm gonna say? I want to get twisted going mm -hmm. into different countries. So I'm hearing that, yes, the Jews were scattered. And that's why they are um, some of different skin tone. But I don't even hear many of, of about um, Jews who are, non, who are not white still. Where are they? They still scattered, unknown, or are they they're not known of. So that's my that's what I wanted to share. It's just like curiosity. Thank you. Sister Sandra, I really appreciate those comments. Um I, I want to tell you that um, you know, the 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 skin color is, you know, uh the the, the Israelites are all shades of color. OK, um, they're all shades of color from 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 dark brown to light brown. Um, however. The the vast majority of Jews. Um, the scholars will tell you, the historians will tell you that they were black. Um, and one of the reasons to know this also is when you look at Joseph. Where was Joseph? Joseph was in Egypt. Remember when his brothers came to see him? Yeah. They, they didn't recognize him. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he 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 looked like you know, I'll say it like another black person, another black brother, you know, because they looked like the Egyptians. You know? Right. He couldn't recognize them because of the same they had the same they were skin they weren't they weren't kin, they weren't family, but they were skin looking, right? They had the same skin tone. Um Moses and in and, and the children of Israel, they came out of where? Egypt, right? And you remember when Moses, God told him to put his hand out, right? It returned, it came out white, and then he put it back in his bosom, and it came back to its original color, all right? Even Paul, Paul, who was who was a Jew, was mistaken as an Egyptian. So Christ, as I mentioned earlier, Christ, where did he go to, where did Mary and Joseph take Christ to flee from Herod? They went to Egypt, because they all looked alike. OK, right. so um, there is a wonderful uh, book that, that I've I've kind of mentioned, um, but uh, it's, it's called The Jews in Africa. 
um, and the Americas. It's by um, Tudor Parfait, all right, which is a, a European scholar. You know, and even he will tell you, <laughs> you know, that the Jews are black. Um, so it's we're not going to learn these. You know, we're not going to learn this in 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 mainstream media. You know, they're not going to teach us this stuff. But you know, the historians, the 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 scholars, the Europeans, you know, they they have nothing to gain, <laughs> right? By by saying that the Jews are in Africa or the Jews are black, you know, they have written what they've researched. This is what they've researched. This is what they found, and they're saying. This, the European scholars, even Jewish scholars, are saying that the Jews are black. So um, it's 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 kind of hard because I don't know if you remember, Sister Sandra, in week one, I showed that depiction of the images of Christ and the images yeah. of Noah. Because that's what we're programmed to believe, mm -hmm. right? That's all we see. So you're, of course, <laughs> you're, you know, you're not at fault for thinking that the Jews are white or the Israelites were white because that's what's portrayed. Noah, Abraham, all they're they're always portrayed as white, but um, that is not the case. Um, when you read the Bible, you can see, and throughout history, scholars will tell you the, that they were black. Their skin color was um, black. And then when I say black, I mean um, I don't like this. I don't like to say black because it's not a real, you know, it's not a color. But the shades of 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 darker skin tone, more melanin, more melanin. All right, praise God. Um, so I appreciate your comments, Sister Sandra. We got a hand up, Brother Lenworth. You go ahead. You can unmute and make your comment or ask your question. Thanks, Brother. Yes, Brother Jeffrey. I I like the way you're doing the this study. I just want to mention the Lemba tribe. Mm -hmm. South Africa, mm -hmm. that they are black, <laughs> yeah. and they go through all the tests, DNA, to prove that, yes, they are true children of Israel. Yeah. Thank Impressive. you. Thank you for those comments, Brother Lemworth. Appreciate you. Um, so, uh, continuing, I want to share the screen here. Praise God. So we talked about the Christians, um, we talked a little bit about the Muslim, and when speaking of the Muslim conquest, um, they, they also had an Arab slave trade, as I mentioned earlier, in the east and north side of Africa. And this trade began in the seventh century and continues on even until this day, there's still slavery going on secretively. Um, it is estimating that around six to 10 million slaves were transported in Arab countries. Um, now, North and East Africa had accumulated millions of Jews. And due to the persecution, as I mentioned before, from the Muslims attempting to put the Jews into slavery, these Jews continued to migrate further into um, the uh, sorry, further into West Africa. All right. So I have these maps up and I just wanted you to see. Hopefully you guys can see this clear. It may be better on my end. But this is a map here from the 18th century on the left. And here is the, um, the, the this is an image from uh, the book, um, Hebrewism of West Africa. All right. Um, and this is the path that you could see this dark line that the Jews took to escape persecution from the Romans. This is the line that they took heading towards the west coast of Africa. All right. Now, remember, this happened over time. It's not like they just got there. Obviously, Africa is so huge. Uh, it took years of accumulations for them to migrate further and further, you know, with their backs against the wall, you know, looking <laughs> because they're trying to escape. All praises. And I want to continue sharing my screen. You follow with me here. Now, here I have two maps and I want to talk a little bit about them. OK, so we have a modern day map here on the right of Africa. And here on the left is a map of Africa, but talking about a certain empires. We're going to talk about these empires a little bit now. We're going to go a little bit deeper with the time we have, all praises. In the Encyclopedia of the Jewish Diaspora, all right, in page 454, it says that in later centuries, Jews are believed to have settled in Western Africa. 
Now, before I keep reading, I just want you to know that this, this encyclopedia is written by Europeans. Like I said, this, they have nothing, <laughs> they have nothing to gain by, by saying that the Jews are in Africa. Like it, they're just telling you what they've researched. These, these, this is history. This is scholars and historians that show this. All right. So in this book, once again, in later centuries, Jews are believed to have settled in Western Africa during the height of the Songhai, Mali, and Ghana, and Kanim Bornu Empire. I know it sounds a little Chinese, the Songhai, but it's not. It's not Chinese. All right. Um, According to the accounts from explorers of the region, several powerful tribes of Jews of the Songhai Empire were originate, original Jews. Some accounts place West Africa as a community of Jews in the Andu Forest of Dahomey, south of Timbuktu in the 1930s. These groups still maintain a Torah scroll written in Aramaic that had been burned into parchment with hot iron instead of ink so it cannot be changed. So this is a researcher and explorer from the 1930s that did this. And if you see the Songhai Empire is right here in the west coast of Africa. I want you to kind of keep that image, if you can, of so the Songhai Empire and the Kanim Bornu Empire, and the Mali Empire, and the Ghana Empire. This is all west coast of Africa. And look at where it is. Okay, try to try to remember that. So once again, this is explorers that have done this research and shown that there are Jews during the height of these Songhai and these uh, Ghana and, and Dahomey empires. Okay, all praises. So let's keep that image in our mind. We'll stop sharing for just a moment. So... Let's talk about the Songhai Empire, okay? The Songhai Empire was dominant in the west coast of Africa during the 15th and 16th century. One of the largest empires in Africa, all right? Now, before this empire reached its peak, around 300 AD, okay, 300 after Christ, there was a man who was a Jew by the name of Zahel Yemeni. All right. He was a Jew. And he came, by the way, of Algeria to Kukiga. Sorry, I'm going to butcher these names. I apologize. Kuki, Kukika. Kukiya, which is in Mali. Okay. Mali is all, this is all west coast of Africa. Remember that image I just showed you of Africa, the Songhai Empire? All right. He was the originator of the first dynasty in Western Africa. Now, remember, he was a Jew. In Western Africa, Zael Yemeni was a black man. All right. These empires were like all black empires. Okay. Which we just read before they were Jews in these empires. Remember, we read that in the Jewish diaspora. They were Jews in the West Coast of Africa. And these empires were of a Jewish origin. Of a Jew, so I want to say the word Jew because I don't want to get confused. A Jew origin, okay? So he established the Za El Yamini, okay, which was a Jew. He established and attributed to the ancient Black African Hebrews first empire and a line of kings known as the Za, Ja, and Dia dynasty. So during that time, there was a strong stability of Hebrew culture. And it's interesting to note that in that Ghana was a title of its kings, which means strong warrior. This title was for the kings of the medieval Ghana Empire, which we saw in West Africa. This empire was a Hebrew empire. However, as I showed the map before, I don't know if you remember the map, that green in the coast of Africa, there was a heavy spread of Muslims, right? The Islam rise. And even though there was still a stability, it was hard because this, this spread of Islam was heavy. And it started in, in, in North Africa and began to make its way further down into West Africa. And around the 11th century, 
this empire became mostly converted to Islam in order for them to maintain good trades with the Muslims in the north. So once again, business. All right. In spite of this conversion, there were still many Jews who continued to keep their culture and customs. All right. Nevertheless, we with with so many conversions of different religions, the Jews began to lose their identity as they did with the Romans, as they did before then with the Greeks and as they did in the in Christianity. And remember, I'm saying Christianity during that time. OK. Can I have a reader, please? Can I get the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4? And after that, can I have another reader for the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 26? All praises. We can begin with the book of Jeremiah 17, verse 4 first, though. Thank you. Jeremiah 9, chapter 9. No, Je sorry, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. Okay, I have it. And oh. thou, okay, thank you. Even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For he hath kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeremiah sis. Jeremiah 17, verse 4. Thank you, sis. So. You see here that the prophet Jeremiah is telling them that you're going to discontinue from your heritage. All right. Um, you'll be taken into captivity in the land of your enemies. All right. Now, I want to remind everyone, remember, when they were in Babylon, they did not discontinue fully. Remember, Daniel still knew who he was. The three Hebrew boys, they knew who they were. All right. Ezekiel, he was in Babylon as well. He knew who he was. When they came out of Babylon, they still had their heritage. Remember, Zerubbabel and Ezra, they rebuilt the temple. All right? So they didn't lose their heritage out of Babylon, saints. This is future. This is future prophecy that Jeremiah is telling us. Jeremiah is letting us know that you will discontinue. You will lose your heritage. Why did they lose their heritage? Well... It's very similar to what the Moranos went to, which are Jews in Spain. It's very similar to how the Greeks persecuted them and forced them into the Helen way, the Greek way. They had to take their custom. They're very close similarities. And, you know, it's 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 something that we we have to acknowledge these truths, you know. And 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 also during this time, you know. Um, when the Moranos, the, the Jews were, were migrated, right. And they were the, they were put in the inquisition. They were, they were spread out. There were so many Jews that were still being forced into Islam and into Christianity. So of course they're going to lose their ways. I mean, I believe pastor Lang brought that up as well. So, um, in addition to this dynasty, this Hebrew, this black Hebrew dynasty, which were Jews was terminated um, in 1492, this very, very familiar date. There's no coincidence in this reappearing date. And um, talking about discontinuing, you know, what's the root cause for discontinuing? Um, you know, the black people today, you know, not just in the United States, but all across in Jamaica, Haiti, everywhere, you know, um, they are suffering from an identity crisis. Um, you know, we don't know who we are, no matter what skin color or race. If you strip a people, all right, of their land, of their culture, of their language, of their history, it will destroy them. Okay. You look at, it's not just black people who've been destroyed from culture. You look at the, uh, an example is a random, this is a random one, but the Filipinos, look at the Filipinos when they were uh, colonized by the Spain, they lost all their culture when Spain entered in. You know, it, it can happen to anyone, but this is specifically talking about the, the Israelites, that they would lose their identity and, you know, the natives as well. You know, that's another example of the natives. Um, the natives were, were conquered here in these lands of Canada and, and the United States all across the Americas, you know, and the natives on, on reservations have the highest rates of poverty. 
They have the highest rates of alcoholism. They have the highest rates of suicides. You know, today, millions of descendants of slaves are still impoverished and faced with major social economical disadvantages. All right. I, I know the, you guys there in Jamaica and, and Cayman Islands, you understand this. Places in the West Indies, you know, are suffering from these things, losing their identity, which Jeremiah clearly tells us that we would lose our identity and be led captive into all nations. All right. So, you know, what, what else What else can we say about the identity? You know, like, uh, you, you think about it. You know, we read about Jeremiah talking about there would be no one to rescue them, you know, uh, you know, and some people might say, you know, you hear these comments, you go back to Africa and something like that, you know, some this foolish comments, they'd say, you know, but we are going to be in the land of our captivity until Christ comes. And brings us back into the promised land. This is prophecy. And as we're understanding that the people that were taken from West Africa, they are the children of Israel. All praises. And you think about it, we're the only group of people, the Black are the only group of people in the world who cannot be deported. <laughs> you know, we cannot be sent home, you know, because before the slave trade, what, what nationality were you? You know, can anybody online tell us who they were before they were, like, who, was, who were their forefathers? What nation were they? How would you know? Like, what would they say? Oh, I was African? I was from West Africa? Well, Africa is a continent with 54 countries. So which one of those countries did they come from? You know, this this goes back to, to Psalms 83. Oh, Congo. Okay, all right. So you know you're from the Congo? You know that your 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 family's from the Congo, brother? Yes, it's Sierra Leone. Okay, all praises. I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, some people do know their, their ancestry line. On my mother's side, uh, our people go back to Con uh, excuse me, not the, uh, the Congo, but the Cameroon. So I, I, I can, I can testify to that. So I appreciate those comments, brother. But a lot of people don't know that, and, you know, and, what you just said. And the Irish. Okay, so, so. Dapson. All right, all praises. Appreciate you. So let's let's get a reader for Psalms eighty three. All Bless. praises. All praises. Bless the Lord. Psalms 83, 1 through 8 and 12. Yes. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against the people. And mm -hmm. consulted against the hidden ones. Mm -hmm. They consulted or conspiring against the hidden ones, the precious ones. This is talking about the Israelites. The other, their enemies are are are, are having schemes, schisms. Keep going, sis. They have said, "Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, mm -hmm. that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance." You see that. Let us wipe them out. Let us cut them off from being from Israel being a nation. Let's destroy the memory of their existence. Keep going. For they have consulted together with one consent that are confederate against thee. So see here, they've made a decision. They they've allied themselves together against who? The children of Israel. Continue, please. The tabernacles of Edom mm -hmm. and the Ishmaelites mm -hmm. of Moab and the Hagar Hagarness, mm -hmm. Hebel and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Ashur also is joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot, Selah. See, there, there's 11 nations who are mentioned here that have been confederate, that have allied to make the children of Israel no longer a nation. Let's get verse 12. Who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession? The houses of God in possession. This is the, those nations have said, let us seize, let us take 
these what? Houses of God. They're talking about land. <laughs> They're talking about land. That's how they did this. Let's get Deuteronomy 32, 26. Can I have a reader for that? Because God is also saying the same thing because of their disobedience to God's word, to the law, to the commandments. This is what's taken place. They would discontinue. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Amen. That's why, Sister Sandra, thank you so much for reading. That's why when, when you asked that question earlier, you said you always thought, and this is not to insult you or to call you out. This is to bring out the truth because we all thought this. You know, we thought the Jews were white. No, it's because this is the this is the the prophets. This is the prophecy letting us know that God is saying the remembrance of you is no longer going to be there. You know, unless we go digging, unless we go and draw ourselves closer to God through his word and prophecy. And obviously we need a little bit of history to help us out too. All right. So I appreciate the reading, you know, and I want to go back a little bit. There's a little bit of time. I just want to really touch this really quickly and then we'll, we'll close all praise. I really hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, going back to the, 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 the home, the, the Songhai, the empires in those lands, Okay, more history I want to bring out. Um, Benin. Benin is in the west coast of Africa. All right. It's formerly known as Dahomey. All right. That Dahomey empire that we talked about. Historical sources from the book, The Earth and Its Inhabitants, Africa, by Elisi Reckless. In this book, on page 267, this is wonderful. This Dahomey territory, Benin, um, by the Europeans was known as various names. It was known by Fida Wida. The old writers called it Judah. So the Benin, when you look on a map, Benin, it was known as the land of Judah. And the inhabitants of this land were said to be Jews. And during the slave trade, I want this to hit you guys. During the slave trade, between 16 and 18,000 were annually, yearly transported from this territory, Benin, called Judah, where the inhabitants were Jews. 16, 18,000 yearly were transported from this land. Scattering, this is it. One end of the earth to the other. This is prophecy history. All right. I have another source I want to quote. Another book, The Mission to Galil, King of Dahomey, all right? Benin. Written by explorers and scholar Richard Francis, all right? This is an explorer and a scholar. In his book, he says, in Dahomey, Benin, there are numerous country villages, over 115 towns of Jews from the tribe of Judah. I want to show you guys this map. I know the time is going, uh, but I, I, I want to show this map real quick. All right. So here, this map, you can see this map here. If you see in the yellow here on the left, it says Nigeria. All right. All praise it. Right beside Nigeria is Benin. That is that empire. All right. And Benin Dahomey. All right. It was known as Dahomey. There were Jews there, according to scholars, explorers, and historians. And if you look to the map on the right, on the right, there's a map here. And on this coast, it says Negro land. Negro land. All right. All praises. So this map of Negro land is an 18th century map. Here's a closer look. Negro land. Do you remember that map I showed you guys? It showed the the Dahomey Songhai Song, Song Empire. Yeah. Do you remember where it was? It was in this location, Saints. This was the location. Okay. I want to show you another close up. This is Benin. It says Kim of Judah 
Wida. Remember I said that they were known as Wida? All right. This is the slave coast where annually 16 to 18,000 slaves, Jews, were brought from this part of the land, annually transported across the world. I want to share with you one more map. I'm sorry to go fast just because of the time. All right. This is a map from 1588. All right. In the red here is a location in Africa. All right. This is a closer look of this name. It says Ividorum Terra. This is Latin. Terra, land. In translation, the I and the V, there's no V in, in, uh, in during this time. There's no V. All right. It's a U. So, Uderoum, land of the Jews. That's what it says in the Latin. This is a map from 1588. And even in this 16th century, there was a land of the Jews. And let's see this land here. Let's see where it's located. Doesn't it look like the Dominican of Congo? Didn't the brother just say that he's from the Congo? Yeah. That was the land of the Jews. This is a map from 50, this is from the 16th century. So here you have the west coast of Africa, the Dahomey, the Songhai Empire, all around Mali, Niger, Chad, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Cameroon, Central Africa, the Congo. It was known as the land of the Jews. Praise God. And who are these people on the west coast of Africa? These tribes their practices, their culture. As we read, as I read to you earlier, that there were these Jew, Jews, em, there were empires of Jews, black Jews, black African Jews in the West Coast of Africa. And a lot of their customs, their practices, the tribes were majority practicing Israelite culture. And even though they suffered so much persecution, and lost their identity. There are historians and explorers that show us that these are the people. You know, the familiarities. Um, I want to touch one more thing before we close. Ghana, and we talked about a lot with Ghana. And in the book, The Hebrewism of, of, of West Africa, uh, they are saying that it's a historical fact that the mass majority of captive slaves uh were brought through in the Americas, right? Through West Coast of Africa. And there was a minority of them through the East Coast of Africa as well. And the our forefathers that were brought here in the Americas were known as Israelites. They were known as Jews. And their practices that they had during the height of their empires were of the faith of a Jew, the customs and cultures of a Jew circumcision was practiced during that time all right the divisions of tribes were they're, they're, they had the altar posts and so on um not eating unclean meat all right uh the new moon celebrations passover and all these things were still held customs during that time of that empire okay um there are certain tribes the yoruba the igbo tribes they were known as jews there's another awesome tribe I want to mention real close right before we close is the Ashante tribe. I don't know if you've heard of the Ashante tribe, yeah. but among the Ashante tribe was the priesthood. And they had so much origins that the Ashante were known as Levites, okay? Because they had the same type of customs and the same practices. Um, it's It's very important that we understand that in the last days are ahead. And the, the purpose of this study, the purpose of this lesson is to get the understanding of prophecy because prophecies are being fulfilled. And, you know, the mainstream media, mainstream, you know, 
face, I'll say. We're not going to get the understanding through through them because they're not going to break down the truth of who the children of Israel are. But God is not going to fulfill his prophecy through governments, right? Um, or people that feel that they have power. You know, the same way God freed the children of Israel from Egypt with his power, he will do the same thing when he recovers his people from all nations. It's going to be with his power. Um, I'm going to close soon. Uh, I really appreciate you guys um, listening in for this last month. It is an honor. It's a privilege to share this message with you guys. Um, this is the dry bone season. This is this is this is where we are hearing the word. You know, when you think about Ezekiel 37 of the dry bones, they were dead. You know, and, and, and this could be spirit. Some people may think it's literal. Some people may think it's spiritual. That part doesn't matter. The point is, is that these bones were dispersed. Remember, they were dispersed and they were cut off. They were dissembled before they were joined together and rebuilt. Amen. I believe I believe that this is the time that the, jo the joint together. I think this is the time where the bones begin to be put together, where the Israelites begin to be revived and things be begin to get restored. I think this is the rattle that's happening right now. You notice that when you read that there was a rattle, amen. And in, in Ezekiel 37, there was a rattle. And I think that's God awakening us right now to the truth of who the people are, that the promises that we read about through week one, those promises are concerning you. Sister Sandra, when you read the book, I want you to see yourself in the book. And do you tell your, your brothers and sisters to when they read the book, to see themselves in the book. This book is written about you. All praises. This is written about your forefathers. And you're a part of those promises. All you online today that hear this message. This, this is a message that the promises are made to you. Amen. That you would be scattered. And that you're going to be gathered in the near future when Christ returns. This is just to enhance us in belief and faith in Christ. This is not to take away our faith in Christ. Just for you to know, like if you believe you're a Jew, it doesn't remove your faith in Christ. This is just to enhance it. This is to let you know that this book is true, <laughs> that the prophecies are real. And when Christ returns, this is what we have to expect. All praise. So I thank you all. Um, all praise be unto the most high God and to his only begotten son. I, I rest with that. All praises. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you, brother. Jeffrey, thank you so much. I, I am, I am feeling very good, and and I'm, 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 I'm blessed, and I give God thanks for the privilege, you know, that He have granted unto you. I notice something that you are passionate about, and 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 I'm happy that you 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 know deliver, and you deliver well and and as you said in your closing this is something that is promised to us and 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 hearing the truth you know will not rob us from our faith in jesus christ but to enhance our faith to know that we are looking forward for this you know promises that God have made to us, his children. Thank you so much. God bless you. I see the passion. I see the zeal, you know, that you have for the word of God. And you always encourage us, you know, in, in on church locally that we must get into the history, know the history. And once you know the history, then you will all understand the scripture and the promises of God. To God be the glory. Thank you so much. I know Sister Quarry will come and she will wrap it up more nicely for us tonight. Amen. But I'm really happy for you, Brother Jeffrey. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, everyone. And this is the end of June 2024. Can you believe it? Yes, the time is going rapidly. And as we hear the sentiment from Brother Jeffrey, that it is almost time for the Lord to come, I hear the people say, and we must, brethren, be ready, be ready, not getting ready, be ready 
for the Lord to come. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. To God be the glory. Sister Faye, I'm going to ask you please to close us in prayer. And then Brother Pastor Marshall will come with the, the honor of blessing the platform. And then Sister Quarry will give us the vote of thanks. Let us pray. Eternal Father, and all the time I want to give you thanks for your grace and your mercy that you've spared our lives even to the end of this session. I want to give thanks to our dear brother who led out today presentation so clearly as he did his research. We can notice that you really research everything. And I pray Amen. that the Lord will continue to bless him, to open up his understanding, and that when we hear all these things, that we too will not just listen, but to read for ourselves also. Because the word of God says, study to show ourselves approved. Okay? Amen. And matching it also with the word of God. I pray for the Lord anointing upon us as we go through all these series from time to time, giving thanks to pastors and those that surround him with this program. And it has really been food for thought for all of us. So let us Amen. continue to invite others to come along and to listen to what's going on on the Zoom so that they too will be informed. And as they are being informed, that they will share it with others, that we all will be ready to enter God's kingdom. As we can see, the time is fast approaching. Here and have mercy upon us all, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Faith. Thank you so much. Pastor Marshall. Yes, sir. Thank the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth now whosoever worketh abomination, but the thing that are written in the Lamb's book of life. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Father, majestic and power. But now and forevermore let the saints of the living God shout, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Lord. God. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Jesus. the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Marshall. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Lisa Quarry. Yes, 